In the many years since its occupation, the Mojave Desert has seen no shortage of war. The blood of innocents, heroes, villains, and martyrs saturate the scorching sands. Countless lives have been lost in half-baked campaigns and foolhardy invasions. But not all horrors a soldier faces are found inside a uniform, no. For some, the horrors lurking in the shadows are much, much worse. This is the tale of Camp Guardian, an ill-conceived NCR outpost whose entire population suddenly and abruptly vanished. Now, my legionaries, welcome to the wasteland. To the wasteland. To the wasteland. To the wasteland. At the height of their war with the Legion, the NCR scrambled to reinforce their border along the Colorado River, fearing that the Legion would attempt to cross in force and catch them undefended. It was in this scramble that they discovered a prime location, just across Lake Mead to the north of Hoover Dam, a single peak reaching high above the lake, presenting a perfect vantage point of the valley below. From here, a squad of troopers would be able to observe the landscape and report if any Legion forces began crossing the lake north, completely bypassing the heavily fortified Camp Golf to the west. The NCR would immediately dispatch a survey team to Guardian Peak, led by a surveyor named Burke. The team would eagerly climb the peak upon arrival, noting the view of the Colorado from atop, and would deem its location strategically sound enough to move forward with military occupation. Burke and his team, however, failed to properly conduct a thorough survey, and because of this, information that would be vital to the success of the encampment wasn't uncovered until it was too late. Shortly after the report from the survey team arrived, a single squad, led by Sergeant Banner, was dispatched to occupy Guardian Peak and establish an official camp. After three days of perilous marching in the desert heat and through the Cazador-infested canyons of the eastern Mojave, the squad had finally arrived. Although, what they found was far from what they expected. Camp Guardian Daily Log, Sergeant Banner reporting. Day three. <sighs> this place is a mess. Most of the old hiking trails are buried in landslides and the rest is so dusty you can't tell which direction you're supposed to go. I don't know what the hell the survey team was thinking when they said this was a strategically sound location. At least we were issued plenty of rations and the river has plenty of fresh water. We could eat for months. Let's hope tomorrow I'll bring some headway cleaning this place up. Day five. We've managed to shovel most of the debris up to the first bridge. This thing looks like a wreck. Thankfully, there were a few wooden shacks around we can dismantle for scrap to rebuild. I just hope we don't run out of scrap before we finish the trail. Jackson said he heard some kind of howling the other night. It sounded like wind to me. Day seven. Okay, we're making good headway cleaning up the paths. With only the 12 of us, I'm amazed we've moved this much rock in such a short time. Kale and I made it to the top yesterday. The survey team was right. Guardian Peak has one hell of a view, but we still have a lot of work ahead of us. I sent a runner to Bravo to request a radio from McCarran. There isn't much point in having an overwatch camp here if it takes us at least an hour to sprint to Bravo to report a Legion assault. With the cleanup efforts well underway, and the camp officially established, the soldiers were allowed a moment to breathe and even have some fun, as can be seen when observing the new and improved sign for Guardian Peak, showcasing a truly warm human moment amidst the coldness of this long and drawn out conflict. This peace would not last, however, as the camp would soon face a series of supply issues. And if that wasn't bad enough, strange occurrences began cropping up, leaving some soldiers unsettled, and one in particular, increasingly unnerved. Camp Guardian Daily Log, Sergeant Banner, reporting. Day 8. More complaints of strange noises by Jackson. I'm starting to think he still has some unresolved issues after seeing his last squad wiped out by a Legion slaver squad to the south. 
I sent out a few men to investigate, but they couldn't find anything. I think we should keep Jackson away from the munitions until he calms down. Day 12. We managed to get the rest of the path cleared. Some pre-war fencing was mostly intact, and we were able to set it up as a makeshift barrier on the more dangerous cliffs. I hope none of these jarheads fall off. We found a few cave entrances as we were clearing rubble. They lead back to each other, with just a single collapsed path which appears to lead down into the mountain. The damn survey team didn't mention any caves. I hope we don't find any more little surprises. Day 13. It's been almost a week, and still no sign of a radio from McCarran. I'm sending a runner to Bravo to see if they can spare a handheld or any other radio gear until McCarran can get around to sending the gear I requested. I swear, those dumb bastards back at command expect us to use carrier pigeons or something. Day 14. It's been a week, and still no sign of a radio from McCarran. At least Bravo was nice enough to give us a handheld so we can relate to them in the meantime should Caesar try anything. Halford will get the radio set up if and when it finally arrives. For now, he's in charge of the handheld and daily reports to Bravo. After two long and frustrating weeks, the squad of troopers had finally reached a settling point at the newly established Camp Guardian. With the radio in hand and tents over their heads, the mission to watch for signs of Legion advancement finally had a chance of success. In the coming days, however, events would slowly begin to take a turn for the worse. Camp Guardian Daily Log, Sergeant Banner reporting. Day 15. The handheld is working well enough and we finished building steps up the steeper sections of the path. We can finally move the rest of our gear to the top. Last night, Jackson came screaming into the tent, swearing up and down he saw shadows moving in the water. I know legionaries are known to be fast runners, but swimming across the river? I sent half the men in pairs to search the area, but again we came up empty-handed. I'm starting to think Jackson is unstable and may need counseling. I'll request a replacement when we get the radio from McCarran. Day 18. We finally got the radio from McCarran. I've set it up on the peak so anyone on overwatch duty can quickly radio in if the Legion makes a move. I'd like to know which genius back at command decided to send a squad to this location, but didn't think to give us a radio so we could actually call in an attack. Probably another politician's son. Day 19. Okay, now I'm starting to hear noises. During my watch last night, I definitely heard splashes down in the water. I requested an additional survey from McCarran, but they blew it off his nerves. Fish don't make that much damn noise. I sent down half the squad with lamps, but they couldn't see anything. We can't find any other cave openings. <laughs> Maybe I've caught a little crazy from Jackson. <sighs> I wish we had some cat eye. Can't see shit at night. Day 20. More surprises. Collins came across a cave entrance right behind our damn tent. The survey team should have caught this if they'd done a thorough job. I have no idea if anything is in there, but we don't have the manpower to deal with any serious pests. I'm going to have some choice words for Burke the next time I see him. This isn't the first time that idiot skipped over details while surveying an area. I hope to God we're not sitting on some kind of nest. I'm going to send in Frakes and Collins to scout the caves tomorrow. If we have to, we'll use explosives to collapse the cave. The rippling of tattered pages ride the harsh winds as they slice across the peak. The once vibrant NCR encampment, filled with hearty laughter and frustrated moans, now silent. Empty. The population of Camp Guardian completely vanishing into the night, with very few hints to their fate. Before disappearing, one of the troopers was able to send out a distress signal to Camp Bravo. A distress signal, much to his dismay, that Bravo would never receive. Bravo, come in, Bravo. Is anyone out there? We were attacked by some kind of freak mutants from the caves. Please send backup. Goddamn leg. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna make it before I bleed out. Bravo, come in, Bravo. 
The camp was attacked. I think I'm the only one left alive. Guardian is down. I repeat, Guardian is down. Requesting backup from any nearby forces. Those beasts drug the rest of the men away. Oh god, I hope they don't come back for me. In the chaos of the attack, Private Halford managed to pull his knife and plunge it deep into the hideous monster that had abducted him. This saved his life, but at a heavy cost. He was beaten up from the struggle and could no longer walk as one of his legs had been completely dislocated. Alfred managed to drag himself into a corner of the cave, hoping to stay out of sight of the others. Dejected and broken, there was no way he was escaping the tunnels in his current state. Deciding it would be best, he hunkered down in his corner to wait for reinforcements from Camp Bravo. Reinforcements that never came. Halford listened on to the wails of his fellow squadmates as they were dragged down deeper and deeper into the mountain, the walls carrying echoes of their torture, dismemberment, the sound of monsters feasting on the flesh of the men and women he served with, his friends, his family. In those moments, Private Halford cursed the incompetence of the NCR. If only the survey team looked closer, his squad might still be alive. Damn them, he swore. Damn them. If he ever gets out of this hellhole, he's never returning to service for the NCR. He told himself over and over as the walls of the cave continued their symphony. And just as Halford was at his lowest, a small light appeared before him. And behind it, a shadow, vaguely human in appearance. What could have been mistaken for the Reaper in his desperate state was something else entirely. Relax, my friend. I'll take it from here. Ranger CSF, codename Wastelord. I've came across the remains of Camp Guardian after hearing their distress signal and have done my best to record the history of what happened here by putting notes of Sergeant Banner into holotape recordings so that they can survive longer. After finding the cave Banner was talking about, I entered and discovered Private Halford, who was in need of medical assistance. After giving him the best help I could offer, I sent him on his way and dealt with the threat lurking in the caves. I knew there was something fishy down here. It turns out the cave was infested with lake lurks. I cleared the cave and collected the tags of the fallen soldiers. My only hope is that their loved ones find peace in knowing that they have been avenged. I want to give a huge shout out to Wastelord Legends for helping me with this video and providing the narration for the camp log notes. He's a phenomenal content creator, so please go check out his pages and subscribe to show your support. Links will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel so you can be part of our wonderful and growing community. Lastly, if you want to support the channel further, leave me a super chat, become a channel member, or pick up a unique piece of merchandise from the NeoCypher store. You can also share pictures of you and your new merch with me on Instagram. I'd love to see them. Thanks again for watching, and until we meet next, Wale Amicus.